blasting, billowing, bursting forth with the power of 10 billion butterfly sneezes. I'm Tom Bain, and this is Wine, Money, and Song. If you're interested in wines and wanting to find out the best values, please subscribe. So the last episode, we went over what happened in 2023, and basically it's leading us to what is our strategy in 2024. And it was a very tumultuous year, 2023, where a lot of the volumes were down and double digit losses in the wine market and swelling inventories. Uh, and, and, and prices are just too high to exist. Uh, and, and it's too high in Bordeaux. It's way too high in Burgundy. Uh, Burgundy has basically frozen uh, at the top level, uh, even though it's a very small supply of wines. Uh, those top wines, uh, DRC wines and stuff in the secondary market, they're not moving through. Uh, the prices have hit a level where, where it's just staying there. And eventually they have to find a price where they'll sell. Uh, I want to tell a story before I go into the strategy uh, about what I think you should be thinking about in 2024. And I was watching a, uh, I think it's a car, it's a CarMax commercial or a Carvana commercial. And this family is selling their used car. And... Uh, the woman is tracking the value of her used vehicle and she wants it to go up before she sells it. And uh, her husband or her boyfriend is sitting there, should we do it? And he says, no, hold, hold. And every day he's asking, uh, and she goes, hold, hold. And four or five times she goes, hold, hold. And then like at three o'clock in the morning, she's on the internet and she sees the value has gone up a thousand dollars. She sells it. And he wakes up and he says, we sold it. So I want you to think about that in 2024, but I want you to have the opposite philosophy is I want you to hold your buying decisions until the prices start coming down. And are they going to come down? I can tell you one thing for sure. They're not going up. They're not going up. The prices have uh, hit a price of uh, you can't keep raising prices uh, to, to the ceiling, you know, and, and trees don't grow to the sky. And that's where a lot of these wine prices have gone. Uh, and I see prices, especially in the secondary market, start coming down. And uh, for you who are interested in um, Bordeaux wines, Right now, I'd be looking at the older vintages. I'd be looking at wines uh, before 2010, even before 2005. And you look at those prices. Those prices are less expensive, like on the... You can even go back to 90, 96, 98. Uh, they're less expensive than the 2022 futures are. What kind of, you know... Those are wines that have bottle age on at maturity and they're in their drinking window while the 2022s won't be in their drinking windows for at least 10 years. So until the 2022s come down in price, which I think they will, maybe not all of them, uh, maybe the first growths will um, hold forth because uh, their prices are... Uh, their prices are more elastic. People will pay more for those wines because they're royalty and because they're the cream of the crop and, and uh, people will pay up for it worldwide. We'll see if they come down or not. If they don't sell, they'll come down. But uh, I would be looking for the older vintages, especially in Bordeaux. And in Burgundy, i just wait. I, you know, I would just wait. I wouldn't put my toe in there. And uh, there's been a lot of price appreciation in the P in the Piedmonti wines and in the Brunellos in Italy. They really appreciated uh, in the last five to seven years a lot, and I'd be very choosy. Uh, and my strategy for this year is we're waiting for the prices to come down, and some will come down. But what you should be doing is you should be investigating some of the other areas in the world 
who produce really excellent wine. Uh, if you're not just collecting wine, you know, like Bordeaux's and Burgundy's and, and, and uh, Tete de Cuvée Champagnes, which are all wildly expensive now. Uh, uh, as far as Champagne goes, the sales are down, but the demand worldwide, you know, it's there and, and it's not a huge production. Uh, I would be very careful uh, buying those wines because they're some of the Tete de Cuvées are over three hundred dollars, and and uh, I don't know how high those prices can go. I have my doubts. So I'd be looking, I'd be looking at other wines, and I told you about Pimante, uh, Barolos, Barbarescos. Those prices have gone way up. Brunellos have gone way up, uh, and I'd be looking at other wines from uh, from uh, Italy. Uh, I'd be looking at Barbera, even though they're from Pimante, uh, they're still less expensive, Dalcettos, and, and a whole number of other wines that uh, Italy has indigenous grapes. Uh, the wines are wonderful. The white wines from the northeastern part of Italy are tremendous. Uh, go there. Look there. Look there for value. Uh, and wines from France since the COVID uh, the prices like uh, from the Loire, Sancerre and Puy Fume used to be $20 a bottle. They're now $30, $35, $40 dollars a bottle. And they're made from Sauvignon Blanc. Do you wonder why there are millions of cases of uh, tank fermented uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc selling like crazy? That's part of the reason. You know, you can pay a half to a third of the price. Is it the same? Quality, no, but people people need to have value, and and they're shoving people out of the market at those prices, and it's true with a lot of the wines from France. Alsace wines have gone up, uh, and and all all the other wines from France, and you should be looking at Chile. Chilean wines—they've been making wines for centuries. Argentine wines, and you know how I love. Uh, how I love the Catina wines. They make a lot of really good wines and just their straight Malbec and Cabernet and their straight Chardonnay, just the bottom level quality are excellent. And they're around 20 or less. You should be looking there. Argentina makes a lot of wines and a lot of value wines and high quality wines. Uh, you should dip your foot in with South Africa. South Africa has been making wines for centuries. Uh, there's very little known about it, very little promotion. But as a wine consumer and just having the curiosity and about learning new things, you should go out there. And, and I'll be working this year to find wines for you to look for from those areas. And uh, keep, keep your minds open. And if, if the French wines... Uh, you know, start going down, then, you know, you can go back into that. And, and, you know, Spain has a lot of really good wines. And, you know, I've mentioned the R.R. Lopez radio wines, phenomenal wines. And you should be looking at those wines. And you should be trying wines from Spain. Very, very diverse. And some, and some outstanding values. Red and white. Now, I want to talk a little bit about California. Uh, and about the price of California wines. California is sort of its own little game because it's, 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 it's beyond, you know, you have the big producers who sell their wines in supermarkets and drugstore chains and, and you can even go into gas stations and they sell wine in certain states. And these companies make hundreds of thousands of cases of, of, of uh, some of the wines are very good and, and, and value priced to sell. And they cleanly made, well-made wines. Uh, but if you're really interested in wines that have distinction, uh, you know, you have to go to other wineries. And Napa Valley, Napa Valley is very different than a lot of the other California wines because the land in Napa is very expensive. Um, I'm very partial to Sonoma too. You know, Sonoma has excellent vineyards and mountain uh, 
ridged vineyards that are very good. But Napa is where California wine is. That's that is the prestige. But understand, there's hundreds of wines from Napa that sell for 150, 250, 300 dollars. And how can that happen? Because most of these wineries, people go and they visit the winery, they take a tour, they pay $70, $80 to taste the wine. And then once you get in there, they try to hook you in to the wine club. And if you've ever been to a, um, a uh, meeting where they're trying to tell you to, uh, s- sell you timeshares for a vacation spot, it's high pressure. It's high pressure when you go to these wineries. They try to hook you in. This segment, you know, we have this uh, bunch of wines you can sell this part of the club, and then you have a premium, a gold, and a platinum, and they don't give the wines away. They sell it at retail. Now, what's to their advantage of selling those wines at those prices? Well, guess what? They sell you the... uh, retail price generally and only if you order a lot they give you a break Uh, so what they're doing is they're bypassing the importer wholesaler which is about 30 percent they charge up and then they avoid the retailer which is another 25 35 percent and they pocket that themselves and a winery doesn't only make wine they're in a hospitality business they're entertaining guests that come in you can have lunch at these places. You can have formal dinners. Some of them have hotels attached to the wineries. So it's beyond making wine for them. But if they can sell like half of their wines at the back door and make those extra margins that the uh, wholesaler and the retailer would get and they pocket it, very profitable for them. And they don't care about the final end market. They don't care about the three tier system. And uh, you have to understand why the prices are so high in Napa Valley. Uh, Because it's a hospitality business, a lot of these wineries. And that's how they get those high prices. Uh, And and people get wined and dined, and, and, and it's an experience for them. It's a place to go to. It's a destination, and they're willing to pay up for it. So think about it that way. Uh, So I think... To finalize my thoughts is I want you to hold to a great degree with all the um, top wines uh, as far as Bordeaux and Burgundy and uh, a lot of the top Italian wines. See where that market's going. Uh, We do have a 2023 Bordeaux futures campaign that's going to take off in a few months. And I'm sure they'll be blowing smoke up our butts again. Um... And there's just too much wine backing up now. So if they're going to be successful in 2023, they're going to have to lower the prices 25, 30% just to get interest. Um, But as far as what you should be doing, I want you to hold. I want you to look and be very, very particular where you're spending your money. Because I think prices are coming down. They have to. They're sitting there. And, And reality has to... Has, has to reestablish itself with double digit losses in sales, you know, in volume. Something has to give, and the thing that I think is going to give are prices.